All right, so today we're gonna be talking about the genetics behind Naruto, right? We're gonna be talking about why the Senju can't use the Sharingan, why the Uzumaki can't use wood release, even though they're distant relatives uh, to the Senju, and just the overall science behind the Dojutsus. We're basically gonna be focusing on the Dojutsus in this video. I briefly kind of went over some of this stuff in one of my previous videos, the Byaku Sharingan Explained, where I talked about a hypothetical Dojutsu, if incomplete or codominance uh, were to be possible in the Dojutsus. Although there was a statement uh, from the creator of Naruto that said, that if an Uchiha and a Hyuga were to have a kid, they would probably have one Sharingan and one Byakugan. It was more of a hypothetical, but again, today we're going to be just focusing on the overall science of the Dojutsus. We're going to be stating just facts today, right? Before we get started, there's going to be a lot of Punnett squares and stuff, so I'm just going to talk about a couple of things that you might need to know in advance before I start uh, diving into it. First of all, the way that most genes work, if you t if you take in like a, a high school or, or, um, or college uh, bio, you, you're probably familiar with Punnett squares. Uh, if not, I'm going to briefly explain them right this basically allows you to uh, make a little chart that's going to show you the percentage uh, chance on if if you will pass down a, tr a specific gene or a trait or not so when you have specific genes you have dominant and you have recessive genes right the dominants overcome the recessive genes and they are in pairs right so if you have two dominants the dominant trait is going to show if you have a dominant and a recessive the dominant trait is going to show if you have two recessive the recessive trait is going to show for example in uh in real life right um like blue eyes are, are a recessive trait um very similar to the show as well so if you have some if you have a parent with dark eyes and a parent with light eyes more likely than not you're gonna have dark eyes depending on if the parent with dark eyes is homozygous or heterozygous Heter those are some other terms we kind of got to go over homozygous is if you have uh, two of the same exact trait right right so if you have two dominants or two recessives and heterozygous is if you have one dominant and one recessive right um, again you can pause you can go back kind of uh, look into that a little bit more but now let's kind of like dive into how this is relevant to the naruto verse right so as we all know kaguya is homozygous dominant for the byakugan um and because she had it before eating the chakra fruit she already had it she was born with it after eating the chakra fruit um it changed her fundamentally in her very dna to the point where she was homozygous dominant for the sharingan as well right because she had a, a whole a whole other eye um which became known as the the rene sharingan um and it's basically like a more advanced uh dojutsu that the sharingan roots from and the way that we know that is because it has the eye of insight and the eye of hypnotism as well we know that Hagoro Momo was more than likely heterozygous for the Sharingan. What does this mean if you have one parent that is uh, homozygous dominant and one that is homozygous recessive? You're going to be, all the children are going to be heterozygous, meaning that they have one dominant and one recessive trait, right? So, Hagoromo would be heterozygous for the Sharingan, which will lead to him having a 50-50 chance of passing it down, which makes sense because Indra inherited it while Asura did not. Um, also, Hamura did not end up awakening the Sharingan, which means that when Kaguya got the Rene Sharingan, she probably became heterozygous for the Sharingan, honestly, because Hamura did not end up getting it. Either way, either way, Hagoromo was still heterozygous for it, which means that he had a 50-50 chance of passing it down. Indra got it, Asura did not. This makes perfect sense here. Since Ashura did not have the genetics for this do dojutsu, he could physically not pass it down to any of his descendants, which is why the Senju and the Uzumaki do not have any dojutsu, because they're descendants from Asura, who is recessive for both of these traits, he does not contain any dojutsu traits or, or genes in him, right? Um, since Indra was heterozygous for the Sharingan, he also had a 50-50 chance to pass it down. If, if he had, say, a, a wife that was homozygous recessive, because obviously uh, nobody else besides uh, those three at the time that we knew of that interacted with them at the time had dojutsus, which means that either not all of the future Uchiha are capable of awakening the Sharingan, which is possible because we don't see them all awake in the Sharingan, or that there was inbreeding amongst his descendants, which resulted in some homozygous dominant children. I feel like the latter is more likely because it seems like every main Uchiha that actually tries is able to awaken the Sharingan, right? Every primary Uchiha that we've seen eventually awakens the Sharingan, which means that there was probably some inbreeding amongst uh, the descendants of Indra. Um, something similar could have happened with uh, Woodstyle, where it was a dominant trait that was kind of diluted over time so that only half of the Senju uh, would be able to use it. Again, if you mix a heterozygous uh, with a homozygous recessive, 
uh, half of them will be heterozygous and the other half will be homozygous recessive which will not be able to use them the half that is heterozygous would be the Senju clan, the other half would probably end up being the Uzumaki clan over time. And this also means that there should be more Senju that are able to use wood release, but it could be that Hashirama was one of the most proficient at it, and that's why we only see him showcase it after Ashura. And again, the Uzumakis wouldn't have it because they would be the other half that bred with the more homozygous recessive. Um, similar logic also applies to pretty much all Kekigenkai, so I'm not going to just cover each individual Kekigenkai because I, I don't want to keep repeating myself and making more Punnett Squares more work than I have to. But new Kekagenkais could have been created, such as Kimimaru's Kekagenkai, where he can control bones. This could happen through mutations resulting in errors in copying DNA sequences in order to create something new. This evolution would actually uh, end up being passed down amongst clans and would end up being a new Kekagenkai. This could be repeated over and over again among several, several generations to create all the Kekagenkai that we know today. Again, very similar logic applies to most of them. I'm not going to make a whole like Punnett Square for everything else. Uh, and also, so this video is mainly focusing on the Dojutsus and the Kekagenkais. There could be some other things I could be going over like hair color and like eye color, but those aren't as interesting. I'm also thinking about talking about the genetics behind Dragon Ball and that's pretty much it. If you guys like more videos like this, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, I'm almost at 10k, so if you guys could actually subscribe, that'd be awesome. This time, trust me, it'll be worth your while.